going to show you how to ferment mushrooms in two different ways. Now both method one and method two produce a delicious fermented mushroom. So stick around, that's coming right up. First I just want to say hi and welcome to my channel Clean Food Living. My channel covers all aspects of clean food life, from delicious recipes made with whole clean foods, traditional food preparation, like today's video with fermented mushrooms, but also topics like garden and farm, herbs, how to use them for optimum wellness, detox and cleansing to improve your health. Now, if those topics sound good to you, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Now, without further ado, let's ferment some mushrooms. With method number one, which is what I'm going to show you right now, is we're going to make the brine water for the mushrooms. Now first you want to cut up your mushrooms. And it doesn't matter if you have white or brown or any type. This fermentation process works for all mushrooms. Now what I like to do is I like to cut them into fours like this because it makes for a really nice big meaty bite. It will break down a bit in the fermentation process, kind of the way that sautéed mushrooms shrink up in the sauté pan. Now you can keep the stem, but you want to cut this hard, dry end off. Or you can cut the whole stem off, it really doesn't matter. One of the things that I really enjoy about fermented mushrooms is that it's easy on the digestive system. Now if you're somebody who has a weak digestive system, like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and maybe raw vegetables are just too hard on your tender gut, even fermented ones, try fermented mushrooms. Now, mushrooms are obviously really soft and spongy even in their plain, raw nature state, but they become even more delicate in their flesh and wonderful in flavor when they're fermented. So it just might work if you have a sensitive gut to raw vegetables. Not to mention the fermentation, it just packs these into a super nutritional, probiotic superfood. Now I'm going to ferment these mushrooms in a mason jar, but you can use an official fermentation jar if that's what you have and prefer. I find this way just inexpensive and easy. So to make your brine, the water proportion is one tablespoon of sea salt to two cups of fresh pure water. Now I have mine already mixed here and the reason why it's kind of pink is because I used Himalayan pink salt. You want to use a sea salt that has not been highly refined. Those refined salts or table salts, they've had bleaching agents and other kinds of treatments done to them or have anti-caking agents added and those things just aren't good for you. They don't need to be in your food or in your body. Also be sure to use pure clean water and not city tap water. The city tap water has chlorine and other chemicals in there that will prevent your fermentation. Not to mention it's just not good for you. So again, fresh pure clean water and then one tablespoon of sea salt. You'll give it a mix here in your water until the sea salt is mostly dissolved. Now if there's a little bit of grains or minerals at the bottom, that's not a problem at all. If you're anything like me, you like minerals in your food. Okay, so now we're going to pack the jar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of this brine and just put it right at the bottom, just a little bit like that. And just a side note here, make sure that your mason jar is freshly washed with hot soapy water and same with your hands. Okay, now that that little bit of brine is in at the bottom, I'm just going to gently put in the mushrooms here. You want to press them down, but not so hard where they are damaged or bruised. Then I've opted to add some fresh rosemary from my greenhouse here. Now this is optional, you do not have to add any fresh herbs, but let me tell you, it will make your fermented mushrooms absolutely delectable. But if you have basil or thyme or oregano, those are all wonderful herbs to give amazing flavor to your mushrooms. And I'm just gonna put a sprig there, right like that on top. And then I'm going to pour some brine water on top, just a little bit. And now I'm going to repeat, I'm gonna add some more mushrooms. Then I'm gonna add another sprig of rosemary, and it's gonna be this layering effect all the way through. Brine, mushrooms, herbs, brine, mushrooms, herbs. A little bit of brine. You don't wanna to add too much at once because you don't want your jar to overflow once you push these mushrooms down. Okay, I think we're pretty full here, so I'm gonna add one more sprig of fresh herbs. Then what we need to do is make sure that the mushrooms get fully submerged in the saltwater brine. 
You see the salt water acts as an antimicrobial for bad bacteria, but it allows the lacto-fermenting bacteria, the good guys, the probiotics, to thrive and survive. So it's important that as we push this down, you want the mushrooms fully submerged so that they're protected from the bad bacteria. Typically, I like to use a cabbage leaf to help hold them down. This works really well if you're familiar with making homemade sauerkraut, but the mushrooms are actually a bit more buoyant. They're going to need a little more help being held down. The cabbage leaf typically isn't enough, but it's a good start. So you see this here, you see how the brine is coming up over the cabbage leaf, you want that, and then um, you see this air pocket, so I'm going to try and press this down to work that air pocket out. There we go. The mushrooms are fully submerged. Now this is kind of funny, don't laugh, but this is my rock that I use as a weight. This rock is scrubbed down with hot soapy water and then I've boiled it as well for a good 20 minutes. So it is clean and sterile. You don't have to do that every time. Just that one time from when I brought it from the outside to the inside and now this rock's job in life is to be a weight for my fermented foods. So just to keep the mushrooms from coming up, which they will as they ferment, just press that down a little bit. And there we go. To allow the gases to escape, but keep all debris out, I use a coffee filter and I just put it right on top like this. And then I use the jar ring right on top to hold it down. Ta-da! Now you're just gonna set this on your countertop and put a kitchen towel over it for three days. Then once those three days are done, then add the complete lid back onto the jar and place in the fridge and they're ready to eat. If they even make it to the fridge, they're so good. Now with method number two, we're gonna allow the mushrooms to make their own brine water. So you'll take your chopped mushrooms here, put them in a bowl, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to sprinkle the sea salt on top, but you're not gonna add any water. Now the sea salt's gonna act on the flesh of the mushrooms and draw out that water, hence making its own brine water. For a small amount like this with these little tiny pint jars and we're not doing that many mushrooms, I'll start with one half teaspoon salt. Now this method takes a little longer. The mushrooms are not gonna instantly have their water withdrawn. Now if you've got the patience and the time to work these mushrooms, it'll be worth it. The flavor is actually really good. It's slightly different than the method one, but both are good. So what you'll do is you will just sprinkle the salt over your mushrooms. And I think for this amount, one half teaspoon was plenty. Give it a toss so that the salt covers and coats all the mushrooms. And then you're just gonna let the mushrooms sit for a bit. And the salt's gonna start working on the mushrooms. We're gonna let the salt work for about 20 minutes. And then when we come back, we'll give it a little kneading with our hands. So I'll see you in 20. Alrighty, it's been about 20 minutes and this is just the initial, but you see the mushrooms are looking pretty wet. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to knead the mushrooms. And this just helps work the salt. Now you don't want to like crush the mushroom, but you can press them a little bit. You see how the, the juices are coming out when I just press it a bit? So that's what you want to see and we're just going to gently knead and press just a little. Now as you can see, this method takes a lot more time and patience to work through. So to me, it does come out with a slightly different flavor, which is absolutely delicious. So if you're into experimentation, then I would recommend giving this method a try. I think with our Western culture, our relationship with our food is highly removed because we're not getting our hands on our food anymore. We're not preparing it. It's coming from packages and boxes and paper bags. Our great-great-grandmothers, they had really good relationship with their food because they got their hands into the preparation of it. And I'm kind of squeezing as I work it, not real hard, but that's really drawing the water out. So I think they're ready now. This is what they look like. And then at the bottom of the bowl, uh, there is a little bit of water there you can see coming out. But more of the water will be extracted when we start pressing it into the mason jar. I've kind of switched up the camera angle here so that you can see what it looks like as we press these mushrooms down. All right, yes, look, do you see all that water? This is great. See how I'm pressing down? And the mushrooms are fully submerged under that liquid. That is great. I'm going to use a cabbage leaf to help hold these down. So, 
And then just bring it around. You see, make sure there's no air exposed. There's some here. Push that down a bit more. Yeah, that looks good. Then I've got my sterilized weighted rock here and I'm just gonna push down a little more and look. See all that nice juice? All the mushrooms are totally covered. I'm gonna take my coffee filter here and place the ring right on top to hold that filter down and there we go. See, there it is. Just like with the method one, you're gonna just set this on your countertop, cover it with a towel, and let it sit for three days. Now these are two fermented mushrooms that I have already prepared. Now the reason why it's dark on the top and light on the bottom is just the top layer oxidized a bit, which is totally normal. That's what it should do, and it won't hurt you. Then with these, we have that same oxidation on the top with the darker, but look how much darker that mushroom juice is compared to this one. Method two, your mushrooms won't float as much. In this one, the water stays in the mushroom flesh more. And then with this one, we pulled the water out to make the brine from the mushrooms. Therefore, they're not as buoyant because they have less water content in them. So you can tell that just by in color, the flavors are gonna vary just a little. Now I did put the rosemary in this one as well. And obviously that impacted flavor a lot, but I have had them without the herbs and they do have a slight variance in flavor. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this and also check out my other videos here. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time, bye.